Guys, look, my mom got me a Santa hat. Isn't that cool? And I got a dancing Santa. Look, does it work? Oh, last night we we did our Christmas cookies, and my dad he put boobs on the snowman. My mom got really mad and said, you better make sure Nana doesn't get that one. Oh, I'm still trying to get my monkey, guys. It's almost Christmas. I, I don't want to have to do this, but I, I, I'm going to do it, okay? I'm going to use the MK Opera. You give me, give my mom a million subscribers. And likes and shares and oh, I gotta keep it short. Don't forget like and subscribe, okay? Come back. Here's my mom. Hey everybody, how you doing today? My name's Aki King and this is King Gong Crazy. Today we're going to be looking at some conspiracy theories that are pretty disturbing. Let's get into it. I'll tell you that the Alpha Draconians are here now where there are 1,833 of them that have been living underground between 100 and 200 miles beneath the surface. They've been here, some of them have been here a long, long time. They have lifespans that are thousands of years. Uh, uh, they're carnivorous. They are not friendly to mankind. Um, at least the ones that are here. Are you saying they say eat humans? Yes. And they need to be, they won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. You know, and we've been told, we've been told, you shouldn't talk about that. You know, there are other people say, well, you better not talk about the reptilians. Well, you know, bull, you know, why not? According to the Andromedans, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. That's tough. You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in the Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are... Do you think this is true? It would explain a lot why... People never get found. Where are they going? Why are we allowing this to happen? How and why should people stay in denial about it? Now, how are they able to do this? How are they able hmm. to, how are they able to how are they able to do it? How are they able to come up out of this from underground and do it or do they have There are systems for... everywhere that are being helped by the Greys and also there are groups within the higher echelon that are actually helping them acquire this. So human beings are abducting the kids and giving them to the gray suit and turn giving them to the alpha drug companies? That's right. That's part of the deal. Oh, wow. That's really creepy. Like heaven in the woods. Did you guys see that? Kind of the same. Kind of. No. Nah. Project Sunshine was a secret mission that happened in the 1950s and effectively its whole purpose was to steal corpses and not just any corpses they were stealing corpses of young children babies and children and they were and uh, they were testing um, how radioactivity and how dropping nuclear bombs affects cell tissue in young people why is it always the children So without telling those families of those people that they buried, they had agents all around that they would pay to dig up, like grave diggers, bro. Dig them up, chop a piece of a limb off, send it to a lab so they could analyze, yo, this is what nuclear bombs do. And they didn't get the permission of the family members. They didn't contact the deceased family. They desecrated basically graveyards and corpses, which in a lot of cultures and religions is a big no-no. You don't touch the dead, you let them rest. Have you heard... Next. The Bob Ross theory 
We all know Bob Ross is the lovable curly-haired painter on television. But what if I told you there's a much darker theory surrounding Bob Ross? This theory claims that he's actually a serial killer, and it's all because of this painting right here. This painting is called Happy Little Accidents, but the story surrounding this painting is anything but happy. What looks like a typical serene forest landscape actually looks eerily similar to this location. This place is known as the Devil's Tree, and the bodies of five females were found killed and buried here. Is this all just some strange coincidence, or was Bob Ross really Really a serial killer, painting the locations of his victims for the world to see. Let's talk about... I can't even fathom Bob Ross being a serial killer. Uh, okay. Still love him, though. Oh, this one is about Valiant Thor. If you haven't heard of him, this will explain it. He claimed to have met an alien named Valiant Thor. Thor, who said he was from the planet Venus, told Adamski that he was on a mission to Earth to help humanity. Thor was described as being tall and handsome, with blonde hair and blue eyes. He wore a silver jumpsuit and carried a small crystal that he said gave him power. Adamski's story was widely publicized, and Valiant Thor became a popular figure in UFO circles. However, there is no credible evidence to support the existence of Thor. The only source of information about him is Adamski's own testimony, which has been disputed by many people. In spite of the lack of evidence, some people still believe that Valiant Thor was a real alien. They point to the fact that Adamski was a respected figure in the UFO community, and that he had no reason to make up such a story. They also argue that Thor's message of peace and understanding is consistent with what we know about other alien cultures. Whether or not Valiant Thor was a real alien, his story has captured the imagination of people for many years. He is a reminder that there is still much that we do not know about the universe, and that there may be other beings out there who are trying to help us. Here are some of the known facts about Valiant Thor. He claimed to be from the planet Venus. He said he was on a mission to Earth to help humanity. He was described as being tall and handsome, with blonde hair and blue eyes. He wore a silver jumpsuit and carried a small crystal that he said gave him power. He met with George Adamski on several occasions. His story was first reported in 1952. There is no credible evidence to support his existence. He had an IQ of 1,200. Despite the lack of evidence, some people still believe that Valiant Thor was a real alien. His story has captured the imagination of people for many years, and he is a reminder that there is still much that we do not know about the universe. The fact that Valiant Thor was said to have an IQ of 1,200 is particularly interesting. This would make him one of the most intelligent beings on Earth, and it would explain why he was able to learn so much about our planet and our culture in such a short time. It is also possible that his high IQ gave him the ability to communicate with other beings from other planets. Of course, there is no way to know for sure whether or not Valiant Thor was a real alien. However, his story is a fascinating reminder that there may be other beings out there who are more intelligent than we are, and who- I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I've heard the story of Valiant Thor before. Could be. We don't know. So there's a the conspiracy theory about Mitch McConnell freezing, and supposedly because of mind control. Watch this closely. Arts and cooperation. He froze immediately when she touched his elbow. I don't know if you know anything about hypnosis. I have been hypnotized a couple of times. And they put in suggestions. Could be. Who knows? It's 
scary stuff. That's that's really scary stuff. Everyone knows about Epstein Island, but have you heard about Rothschild's Island? Doesn't surprise me. I don't even know who that is. The Rothschilds are like the most mainstream name when it comes to the Illuminati. Like oh, everybody no. knows about them. But yeah, they bought an island off the coast of Antarctica. Why would you want an island in Antarctica? Why would anyone go to Antarctica? I think there could be like secret tunnels they have built in under there. <laughs> Your go-to is always <laughs> secret tunnels. There's no other reason for them to have an island. Penguins? Everyone... Penguin. <laughs> I would have penguin. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. Why would you want to live in Antarctica? Why would you want to have an island there? Are you... They know things that we don't. We'll just leave it at that. This man. Royal Rife. In the 1920s, Royal Rife invented the world's most advanced microscope. His powerful optical microscope could magnify objects up to 60,000 times their original size. This was far beyond the capabilities of conventional microscopes of the time. Because Royal Rife was able to see the actual disease affecting human bodies, he soon went after the resonant frequency needed to dissolve or destroy these diseases. Similar to the concept of a singer being able to shatter a glass with their voice, a resonant frequency can be found for anything, including viruses, bacteria, cancer, and other diseases. By simply finding the resonant frequency of these diseases, they can be shattered and destroyed. This concept became known as Rife Therapy. If you search through the internet, there are thousands of testimonials of this type of therapy saving people's lives. It is widely regarded as a pseudoscience, but some of the most wealthy and powerful people in the world utilize this therapy when they get sick. Royal Rife deserves to be remembered. He absolutely deserved to be remembered. And um, they stopped him. They took him to court and stopped him from using his machine. Um, that he created to eliminate cancer. And he cured 16 people from cancer, some terminal. You know, and it, within the past couple of years, science has finally come out and said, yes, frequencies do work. Well, thanks. I use them. And if you haven't, you should look into the self agile frequencies. Use them and you'll be impressed. You will. Washed to shore and it terrified residents. The incident happened in 2008 when several friends were walking on the beach in Montauk, New York. Here's the crazy part. This creature was located a few miles from a mysterious place called Plum Island, which is known for a laboratory that tests diseases on animals. I remember seeing this on the news when it happened. I remember the pictures of this creature. But get this, this location is so dangerous that staff have orders to destroy all animals that come near the facility. The Montauk monster looks like it was a genetically altered animal, because the skeletal structure didn't match anything known and that's why it's believed to escape from Plum Island. And guess what? When looking at the photos, it shows a bracelet around the creature's arm, indicating that it was being tracked by an organization. It should be noted that some experts think this could have been a raccoon. And that would make sense considering they're native to that area of New York. But here's the... That's not a raccoon. Hey, the creature looks too large to be a raccoon. Not to mention, not. it looks like it has a bird's beak. I need to let you know this isn't the first time an unidentified creature washed ashore near Plum Island. Which leads me to believe there's something going on. There's absolutely something going on at Plum Island. The baby blue ritual is the scariest ritual that anyone can do. The way that this ritual works is very similar to Bloody Mary. You start this ritual by turning off all of your lights and locking the door. Is this some kind of black magic? They pluck the eyes out of that baby doll and stuff cotton in there. Okay, I'll just finish the video. Then you stand in front of a mirror and hold out your arms like you're rocking a baby and you repeat the words baby blue baby blue 13 times by the way it's vital when you're repeating this that you do not make a mistake if the ritual is done right you will eventually feel an invisible baby in your arms now this baby will continue to get heavier as it grows larger and apparently this baby can even scratch your arms now, before the invisible baby gets too heavy, you're supposed to take it and flush it down the toilet and then run out of the bathroom. If you don't leave the bathroom fast enough, you'll supposedly see a woman in the mirror 
and she will yell, give me back my baby. And according to urban legends, if you still have the baby in your arms when this woman appears, you'll no longer be able to do anything because uh, the woman kind of, you know. Now, even though this ritual is very dangerous, I will be playing it. If you want to be notified when I play, just click there. I don't think I'm going to try it. Not for me. If you guys want to try it, go ahead. Let me know if you try it see what happens. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you have heard of any conspiracy theories that you would like me to go over, let me know and I'll do it. Come back and see me again. Give me a like and subscribe. I could really use it. Thanks again for watching my videos and hanging out with me. Till next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>